Well, welcome this evening as we gather for worship. A special welcome to all who are here today, as well as our guests who might be online with us this evening. We, um, in addition to our online worship, we continue to worship Thursday evenings at seven o'clock here in the sanctuary. Sunday morning, we have an eight o'clock worship service here in the sanctuary. Our 9.30 Sunday service is outdoors. Please note that two weeks from this coming Sunday, so August 22nd, we have a couple special things going on that Sunday morning. During the outside outdoor service at 9.30, we'll be blessing educators. We'll also be inviting our school kids to, bring, to come and bring their backpacks. And we'll bless their backpacks and bless the educators, bless the kids as uh, the next week then school starts here in Boone. And following the second service, Following that 9.30 service, we'll have a brunch outdoors. We'll be serving Lutheran eggs as well as cinnamon rolls from Whistle Stop Cafe. So maybe about 10, 15-ish is about when we usually get done with service. Um, and we'll be serving under the north canopy just in case, in case the weather doesn't cooperate. If it doesn't cooperate, we'll do, you're gonna like this, Brent. We're gonna do drive-through <laughs> breakfast or brunch. All right. In our prayers today, we remember Sandy Johnson, who is at Iowa Lutheran Hospital. We begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. We pray together our prayer of the day, which you'll find on your today's readings bulletin insert. We pray together. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
At this time, we turn to the Word. The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Arab, the Mount of God. Here ends the first reading. The psalm is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. So then putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who bear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this evening comes to us from John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? 
How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Imagine with me a little over a hundred years ago. And Oli, yeah, that's right, that's his name, was courting a young woman. And as that they had, had arranged for this particular afternoon, they were together out on a rowboat in the center of the lake. And Oli was, he was rowing. And you know, back in those days when you were a courting, you didn't wear tank tops and shorts and stuff like that. So Oli had a suit on with a high collared shirt and a bow tie and the lovely girlfriend that was accompanying him was wearing a flowing dress with even more flowing bloomers underneath. And it was a hot day. So Oli was rowing and he was, he was starting to work up a sweat. Now, he was anticipating though that they were going to have a picnic just as they had planned out in an island, on an island out in the center of the lake. He was looking forward to that picnic for there was shade out there. Well, after they had arrived at the island, uh, Ole grabbed all the stuff that he had brought for the planned picnic and he put a blanket down and they were under this lovely sh shade tree and it was so cool, a nice breeze blowing off of the lake. Just as Ole was to sit down, they were unpacking the food. His girlfriend said, Ole, did you forget the ice cream? Oh, they had talked about getting ice cream and sharing it. And Oli, well, he was in love. So he got in the rowboat and he set to the row, the, the oars again, and he rowed all the way back to the, to the shore close to where there was a little store where he could buy some ice cream. Got the ice cream, got in the rowboat, and he rowed. By now he was really sweating. He rowed and he rowed and he rowed back out and just thinking this is gonna be so great. And he no sooner got under the shade of that tree and presented the ice cream that he had forgotten when his girlfriend said, did you forget the chocolate syrup too? <sighs> well, Oli was still in love with her. So he got in the boat and he put himself to the, the oars and he rowed and he rowed and he rowed back all the way to the shore, went in the store, bought the chocolate syrup, got in the boat, oh, and he put himself and he leaned on the oars and about halfway back out to the island, he had to rest. And while he was resting on those oars, he thought, there's got to be a better way to do this. And he thought, by the end of that afternoon, Oli Evenrood had imagined an outboard motor. Recognize the last name? In fact, when he started building Evenrood motors, that young girl had become his wife. And in the very earliest Evenrood motor advertisements, they told that story about Oli and Bess. 
There's got to be a better way. Have you ever found yourself echoing the words of Oli as he once again got in the rowboat to go get something for his sweetest? The past weeks, we have been dwelling in the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, where Jesus begins by feeding the 5,000. And in the ensuing weeks, Jesus has unpacked for us, invited us into the truth that Jesus himself is the bread of life. It's five straight Sundays from John 6. Jesus is the bread of life. And I think we've been missing something. Because at the same time, when we're in the sixth chapter of John and the Gospel, we've been in our second reading in Ephesians the third chapter through the sixth chapter, which are some of the greatest chapters that Paul wrote. All the congregations, these are the sections that he wrote to the congregation at Ephesus. And as Paul talks to the congregation in Ephesus, he kind of answers Oli's question. And he says, yes, there is a better way. Now Paul's answer, Paul's guidance, there's all kinds of details listed in these readings over these coming coming weeks. But we get some of the great themes in our reading tonight. For Paul says there is a better way and it is living in love. It's that simple. Living in love. You see, what Paul is about as he's talking to this congregation that he helps start is that in baptism, all of these people in Ephesus have a whole new identity. They have a whole new identity, a better way than the way they had been traveling. This new identity is rooted in baptism. Now, it's important when we hear these words from Paul that that what Paul is talking about is, you know, not, you know, they're not, um, they're not merit badges that we try to earn. They're rather marks of the life, the new life that comes to us from Jesus as a gift. I think we can learn a lot by looking at the very earliest liturgies of our Christian church. So these are in the years immediately following, you know, Jesus' ministry. It's when the Christian church is at its youngest. And we can look at the baptismal liturgies that I think help us understand what Paul is talking about. Now, people at that time would have been baptized into the Christian faith at the Easter Vigil. That is, that service that bridges the darkness before Easter morning into sunrise. And this would be at the end of probably a year of intense instruction. Well, this is how it worked. The candidates who had been preparing so diligently and faithfully, while it is still dark, would face the West and they would denounce the forces of darkness. And then they would turn and face the east, and as the the first rays of the sunrise would show, they would declare their allegiance to Jesus, who is the light of the world. And then they would shed their old garments and be baptized down into the water, joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as they come out of the water, they would be given new clothes that were bright and white. So when Jesus says, excuse me, when Paul says, put aside your old ways, your old garments, and put on the forgiveness of Jesus, put on this new life, this better way. It's that imagery 
from the earliest baptisms of those early days of the church. And it's in the midst of this that Jesus, excuse me, Paul says, we are to live in love. Well, I'm not sure living in love has ever been a simple thing. You know, if you were to pick a day, a year, a time in history, I'm not sure it would ever be simple. But I don't know if you agree with me, I think living in love right now might be pretty difficult. As we look around us at a world that is polarized, where people seem to not really listen to others, especially as those who might have a different opinion. And with all the stress of the pandemic, we're so often turned inward, worried about ourselves. You know, us and our families, maybe our privileges or maybe even our rights. But if you can stay with that image of putting on the new life that comes to us through baptism in Jesus, there is a better way. And living in love can mean loving our neighbors. It is through this section of Ephesians where Paul really begins to flesh out how he believes we all belong to each other, that we're connected to each other in vital ways. And one of the main images he uses is we together are the body of Christ. And all the parts of the body, all the members of the body are essential and beloved. Even those parts of the body that the world doesn't value at all. We belong to one another, so we live in love with each other. Now, just one way to think about that are the words that we use. It's also about our actions, but let's focus on our words. Paul says, in our words, don't dwell in bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, and instead, rather build up one another, that our words might be kind, might be tender-hearted, might be loving, and might be forgiving. And then Paul reminds, just as Jesus has forgiven us. Our words are meant to build up. Paul says that our words might come to each other as grace. Wow, that's kind of challenging, isn't it? That our words would build up each other. You know, I think we begin to put this on. It could be that we listen more and talk less, huh? Very much so. I came across an old story of a hostess who was um, hosting a very fancy dinner party, you know, where the guests had all their appointed seating. And there was a guest there who was actually a famous actress who was seated at the other end of the table from the hostess. And being a good hostess, she was concerned that everybody would have a good time. And she looked down at this famous actress and she wrote a note to the actress and she asked that one of the servers would take it down to her. And the actress received this note from the, the hostess, but she didn't have her reading glasses. So she couldn't read it. So she handed it to the man, the guest to her right, and asked if he might read it out loud to her. And he agreed. And this, he says, it says, he read, darling, do me a favor and don't ignore the man on your right. I know he is a bore but talk to him anyway. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that the words in that note did not build up the man on the actress's right. You know, who of us hasn't done a boo-boo like that? Where we've spoken uh, in a way that once uncovered or shared hurts someone's feelings, tears someone down, or divides people. Paul says, live in love and start 
with your words. Now, before I go on, I want to lift up one image from here that might have made you stop and think. It's in the next to last verse, I believe, and as Paul is talking about all this whole new way of living, he says then in verse one of chapter five, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. How do you feel when you're invited to be an imitator of God? Well, I think we need to kind of dig in just a little bit because when someone is called an imitator in today's world, it's kind of often it's a negative thing, isn't it? That we're just imitating someone. We're maybe we're mocking them or maybe we're not authentic. We're trying to be something that we aren't. That's not what's going on here. It is a sense that as we have put on this new way of living is to be what we're wearing, to walk in this new way of life in the way that Jesus has walked. Um, do you remember the name Yul Brenner, the actor, singer, director? Um, He's won Academy Awards and Tonys, but he played one role that most everybody thinks of. When you think of Yul Brynner, what musical do you think of? The King and I, where he plays the king. And he had the privilege to play that role for many years. And people who were observing Yul Brynner when he was young, this would have been in the 1950s, I think, when the musical was first released, Notice that he had to really get into character and he had to be made up and had to have all kinds of mouth. He really needed to kind of act outside of himself. And as he played this role again and again and again over the years, they said, as you watched Yule, it was less, he had to get into character. They had to use less makeup because Yule Brenner slowly became the king. That's what it means to put on this new life and to imitate, is that slowly, bit by bit, we might become, right? Who we are in the waters of baptism. And so, having said that, let's look at that second half of the verse where it's talking about living in love is about a costly love. Because we live in love because Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. That loving deeply is not convenient. It's not simple. And often it is very costly. And yet, Think about that, in baptism we believe we're joined to the death and resurrection of Christ, that in loving we sort of die and rise to new life on a daily basis. Now faced with this idea of living in love is about emptying ourselves, like Jesus emptied himself, to, to give ourselves, even sacrificially, is a little daunting. Like, what do we do? How am I supposed to do it? And I think sometimes we can get caught up. And instead, I would remind you of one of Aesop's fables. I'm not sure they read those anymore, but there's some great fables. And this is the fable about an old crow. And this old crow is out in the wilderness and is thirsty, he is very thirsty, hasn't had a drink in a long time. When the crow comes upon a pitcher that has a tiny little bit of water in the bottom. And the crow st sticks its beak into the pitcher, but it can't quite reach the water. 
So what is the crow to do? So the crow slowly begins to pick up pebbles and drop them in the pitcher. Now, as that pitcher accumulates pebbles, what's going to happen? Yeah, the water level rises until the point the crow can have a drink. I understand that this is how living in love, even costly love, often works in little tiny ways. Things we may seem, think are seemingly insignificant. A kind word, a kind action, forgiving, being tender-hearted, speaking well, and building up one another, working towards the unity of all are like little pebbles. that eventually make a big difference. Small deeds done in love and kindness make a huge difference. So Paul answers Oli's question tonight. There is a better way, and that is living in love. Amen.
We continue our worship by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith along with the church of all times and places. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. We enter into our prayers of intercession. Each petition closes with the words, God, in your mercy, and you're invited to respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ, in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith, exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the good news, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially tonight we pray for Sandy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now may the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.